Howdy, Jester's World, all million of you that are watching. Uh, I am sitting here with coaches Karina Martinez and Warren Sprague. Warren, you might recognize from uh, our Just Recap videos. His Del Sol Dragons have gotten into our league championship. And Coach Karina here, you might recognize from last year, as she is now returning to the championship for her second year in a row. We're not worthy. We're not. Uh, <laughs> with, her, with her wrist side. Um, I don't know if you can say trailblazers or not. but <laughs> Nonetheless. Uh, yeah, no one ever clarified that one for me. So, uh, you know what? Here's a good question to clear up right on the bat. How long have you guys been with your particular school's coaching? Did you both start the same year? It, Warren, Ladies what year first. are you? Okay. Uh, yeah. I started with Del Sol in 2016. So this is so, year number six. Yeah, at least with that camp, I'm pretty sure. Year number six. Okay. Which, Karina, then you're year number five. Yes, because I started in 2017, um, right after I graduated. I just went straight to coaching. Okay, got it. Which is amazing. Yeah. So you guys have been with your camps for a while. How does it feel? Tell me. We don't get to get enough coaches or staff love, so this is your chance to kind of represent everybody. Karina, do you want to go first? You've been there before. Maybe it's easier for you to have an answer. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been, it's been a wild ride. I mean, things change every single year. Um, I started off coaching kids that I was actually in shows with. So that was kind of scary and intimidating. And, um, but it, it ended up good. And I had a lot of help from Kopi that year because I was just kind of thrown into it, which I'm grateful. Now I know how to lead some crazy high schoolers into a championship. Um, and uh, it's just been really fun getting to know all the kids. And for example, last year was my first year that um, all, well, yeah, I coached for example, um, Emmy and Maya, who they, yeah, they um, started off their freshman year and I was their coach their, all their four years and led them to the championship. And that was really fun. And, and um, I love the kids. They're just, they're my besties, really. So you, you both have been around long enough to where you've had more than one cycle of kids. So you've had mm -hmm. multiple, multiple cycles now. Um, and it, I don't know, like, it's tough. Like, I remember the first time I had a four-year kid that went bye-bye and I was like, oh, I can never coach again. I can't, <laughs> it's just, there can't be anyone to replace them, which is a genuine feeling, but also every new cycle brings a whole new set of feelings. So mm -hmm. um, I get it. Warren, you can probably duplicate that message. You know, I won't just for interesting content purposes, but Karina, what I'll say is you're a natural. It's been such a pleasure watching you do what you've done with uh, your school as it has grown over the years. It's so much fun watching strong coaches come up in this league and you do it in the quietest, most humble way I've ever seen, which is amazing when you think about a school and a team that is as larger than life as Riftside has grown to be. So thank you so much for this opportunity for our kids to play together. Uh, super excited to talk to you about it. Uh, as for what it's like to take Del Sol into a championship, um, I mean, Kopi's known me half my life. It's it's a mathematical fact. He's watched me be everything from an over-energetic audience member all the way up to a would-be main stager. And he's given me all sorts of different accolades over the years. Um, but this is one I had to earn. And I'm so proud of my kids for being on board with my program and my vision of what we do, where we don't grow improvisers as much as we grow young adults. And we teach them what it's like to lead and we teach, and I try to give them as much power as I can. So it'll be interesting as we get into this interview, how many questions I get to answer with as much confidence as you want guys, because I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, I've grown into a coach who delegates a lot to his team to give him the ideas. And I tend to steer where they want to go. And that's kind of how we got here this year. Um, my presidents, Speedy and Ghost, have been with me all four years. Speedy has grown into one of the most impassioned improvisers I've ever met, who just wants this chance to go out and, and, and make himself proud. If I'm being honest, he wants this so bad. 
Um, Ghost is the type of person who loves improv and loves what we're doing with it in Jesters, not necessarily the notion of a championship, but is now hungry for that win too. So my kids are hungrier than I am. I'm so grateful just to be at this plateau, just to be at this spot where I say, yeah, I put together a program where we've got now a you know, a top four team and now a, a championship team back to back that tells me I must be doing something right. And that's always been what I've hoped to create at Del Sol. So, uh, heck yeah, man. Hopefully that's a good enough answer, Cope. <laughs> of course. I, I'm, I've got my grading sheet. I'm checking. To make I sure. am always looking for feedback and judgments from Copey Karina. So I, if I breathe weird, I ask him for feedback. It's yeah. just how it goes. <laughs> yeah. And what's the and how do you respond to that, Karina? You say stop breathing, like you, anyway. So yeah, there That's you go. So, yeah. <laughs> here's here's um I, I think this is at least worth worth one question in here. Uh, just maybe to help illustrate for anyone who is watching this, just how tough it is on this side of the world, um, on the coaching side, and and actually being able to figure out how to do all this stuff constantly over and over and over over again mm. for all of the coaches not for you guys but maybe some sort of representative answer here mm. um do you two think and let me start with warren do you two think that the normal grind of the year when you think about it now in full in full spectrum we're here at the very end of it do you think the the grind of the year is worth it whether you are sitting here now or not I mean, I'll be the first coach to say it's a journey, a very special one in and of itself that deserves its own, you know, history books, not just our jesters, you know, championship day. I've loved this season because I walked in on day one with my leadership team having primed about 30 kids to be hyped for me to walk through the door to the point where I had like a hero's welcome without having to do anything. And I watched 30 young minds just leap up and go. We've been waiting for you. And I was like, what a journey this is going to be. You know, how do I get 30 kids into shows? How do I give everybody a chance to grow? How do I help everybody feel valued, which is the core philosophy of who I am as a person. I want everybody I meet to feel like they have value. And it's hard, like, to project you're going to be able to do that with 30 screaming brains let alone you know bella who definitely deserves three reps so that she can have an opportunity to be you know looked at at mvp max i felt like had that same quality speedy and ghost wanted a chance to get their 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 look from copy for those season awards so it meant getting all of them into these touches and then i still have 28 hungry kids and some of them are future leaders too and i want to make sure they have the chance to see what we're about both behind the scenes and in front of the scenes. And I think without the grind of the season, there's no way Dull Souls here. Zero. Like, there's no way. Because I think my kids grew into better improvisers by helping other kids grow into better improvisers. And before you know it, you know, my leadership team gradually over the year is taking on more and more of the discussions about what went right and what went wrong and maybe catching the critiques that I didn't remember to give after a scene, you know, and helping me to truly make everybody better. It makes my job easier if I'm being a little lazy sounding, but on the plus side, it, it, it plants the seeds of what's really important with jesters. And it's showing young adults that if they, want something and if they can think of the right move on the spot or work towards that right move together they're going to get where they're at and i think the dragons are the epitome of that goal in jesters this year so i hope that was good enough <laughs> so was, that, was that good enough was that good enough <laughs> karina is the grind but i do it's like <laughs> well and the reason i even asked this question is because a lot of the things that you volunteer for and I, and I don't think this is that much of a secret but uh, I think I'm pretty sure a hundred percent of our coaches this year are all volunteer I don't think there's anyone who's gotten money for this year um, and even the money that is given out is definitely a small potatoes so um, for most things you volunteer for you volunteer for an hour or two maybe you might turn it into something that you know maybe you do volunteer a couple of times for the same thing um, but not on a weekly basis, plus a, bi a twice a week basis, depending on what school you are that does multiple practices. Um, I mean, that's kind of where we're at. So Karina, 
is the grind worth it? 100%. You know, it's, it's been quite a year, <laughs> you know, with the, everything going on. So it's just important for these kids to work towards a goal and to um, just accomplish that goal because it, it, it just, it just feels good for them. It builds confidence for them. And let's say for even like our seniors right now, Josh, Alicia, um, Sophia, even our lovely seniors on the team, they're going to get that, that social interaction and be able to just even public speak in the future. Do you know what I mean? So it's so important for them to um, just take on an extracurricular activity and um, make those friends. And um, it, it just, it just is so much more than just improv. It, it, it just goes with every single aspect of their life in the future as well. Um, it builds them and shapes them into just great rock stars like they're going to be so successful in their life and improv I think definitely has a big part of that as well if that makes sense the, the majority of our students I would say don't see the long-term picture in this mm -hmm. and, and and as most things um I mean we we know kind of the daily struggles that students go through because we we see it um, but I, I know the long term is not what they're thinking about, and that's clearly what's on the front of our minds all the time. Yeah. So uh, one thing I say to the coaches a lot is sometimes these students don't even know to care. Right now, no one will care as much as you do as the coach, mm. which is the truth. Now, a couple of you students, you might argue with me on that, and awesome. Argue with me as much as you want on that exact point. Thank you. But then I would probably say to you that no one cares around you as much as you do. <laughs> so um, it, I know coaches definitely, this is a long strive to get here. Sometimes not advancing in the playoffs is almost a breath of fresh air because it's <laughs> like, it, it, sometimes it's just, oh, uh, we've had such a long year. Getting here is our, it was our accomplishment. This was our championship. Uh, so for everyone, our goals are different. So uh, what's nice is now when we get to a championship is we get to look at what you guys have done and we get to watch it and we get to awe at it and we get to talk about it for a year and we get to use that as motivation going into next year because as much as everyone has different goals this is a nice thing to be a part of this is really oh. a neat spectacle oh, yeah. of it all oh yeah so so many re we essentially championship day is what it is uh, all those other things are just meant to highlight the main event so right now we have Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant and and I'm facilitating all the undercards. You guys are running the match. So Heck yeah. Um that's essentially what it is. Even as we speak, I just got the emailed results of our MVP award. So um it was just emailed to me. So we apparently have an MVP, but this is kind of that's me run making sure everything uh, on the rest of the day runs well. Right. <laughs> So and thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe a question or two more before uh, we call today. Um, one story from each of you, just the weirdest, funniest, obscurest, something about this year that probably didn't get, didn't happen on a stage. Maybe it was backstage before the show. Maybe it was a practice. What is the most obscure, weirdest thing that just makes you laugh? Uh that that moved you in some emotional way uh i can definitely i can definitely think of one for del sol's camp on one oh, day no. i was there okay um and i haven't had a ton of time to spend with her actually you know what i probably spent the same amount of time with both your schools this year uh, uh on an equal level and you know what yeah i've got one for Riftside as well what's an obscure moment just a just a feel good thing that didn't happen in a show or maybe it was an understory that no one knows about in a show all Who right go first go all right it. all right um i think the the story of this year has been speedy matheson for del sol uh just for me like speedy came into this year somebody who 
had their first playoff experience last year and got to push us through to the final four and has since been just absolutely bitten by the, I want to be at the top level. I can be bug. And so this whole year has been him finding that new tier to himself and truly stepping into whom he is. And I think all of my students have a different version of this story. I think ghost has also had that kind of year from a, much more subtle and adult standpoint. Speedy's is very much just wanting to be good at this sport in his head. You know what I mean? This is an experience for him to be, to prove he can be his best at. And I, I have admired watching how he's egged on our advisor, Dino Taronis over at Del Sol. He's, he was the one who helped us get five showcases this year. Speedy did it. I didn't nag Dino. Uh, Speedy is the reason why we are hosting the championship. Speedy bugged Dino, not me. Like, it's amazing. He's done all of the communicating for me. He's done all of the showcase organizing for me. I haven't had to be there, literally. I'm just there if I'm lucky to support them. Like, the kids have grown their own thing because of this year. And I think Speedy has been the heart of that. So what folks don't understand is like, it's not the Bella show. It's, it's all four of us. I think all four of those seniors who you've seen in these playoffs have been consciously working to get to this exact spot. And it's so divine. Like it's so hard to believe they truly fit it together. Not just because they're different people and different high school students, but because from my coaching standpoint, I'm like, I'm just waiting for me to screw this up. Like, <laughs> There's no way I'm going to make it at last. Right. I always find a way to pick the wrong game. And speedy was the one who kept me from doing that this year. You know, I said, let's play survivor against LVA. And because we've played that 16,000 times, we're so comfy with it. Why do something outside the box? And they wanted to play weekend at Bernie's, which is survivor, but with unconscious people, basically. And they, were, they said, coach, I know we didn't have it great in practice, but this is what we want. Speedy said, said it first, Ghost backed him up. And then it was like, okay, well, here's how we make that worthy for us to get out there and do it. And, you know, it's just, it took a whole team effort. Uh, what you guys don't understand is like, I give so much power to my kids. So the fact that we're up here means that it took us all. And maybe you guys don't know that I'm, couldn't be more proud. So proud. Stupid proud. Without us even playing the championship yet. I hope that's enough. Do you need more? Plenty. Okay, cool. Karina, you got one? I mean, mine definitely isn't as long as Warren's. But <laughs> I talk a lot. I'm so sorry. It's not you know personal. I'm first. <laughs> no. um, so I think my favorite thing that we do before every single show is um, Josh likes to lead this beautiful theater prayer. Um, and it's just really cute. It just kind of reminds me of my theater days because I did theater as well and I did improv as well. So it's just really fun kind of going back to those roots and talking about, I can't even remember what the theater prayer says, but I know it definitely says something about we pray to you theater gods and um, we pray um, to shake William Shakespeare, even though you plagiarized all your plays and this is, not, it's just so funny. It makes me laugh every single time. And um, it, it's just a really fun, like little we get to let out our nerves <laughs> right, before yeah. we go out into the show. But um, I would agree with you, Warren, about being the whole student led. My, I would say my, especially this year, Yeah, my students have done so much to, to put like, to get this far. And that's why it, I think means so much to them. That's why they were crying so much when they found out that they went to the championship. Mm. They were just so excited because all their hard work really, really paid off. And, um, they'd throw a game at me and I'd be like, all right, if you guys let's, let's practice it or practice cool. it and then we'll figure it out. Like, it, whatever they would want to play, I would definitely agree. I, I I would let them do. And I think it's just they they know their limits and they know where they strive in. And, you know, we may not be able to see that from a coach's point of view and them being able to actually steer themselves into the direction of 
you know, going to the championship is really, is really cool. It's really a cool aspect that, that they basically both teams got here with little bit of our help, but <laughs> well, right. Good. Yeah. And it's, and it's kudos to the program you've built over there that it's happened, right. That they do feel valued enough and strong enough to make their own decisions. But of course, in some ways you, you had, they had to do it because you right, right. They, they had to be the ones to do it. So I think it's a cool story that it's this pair of teams ready to go. I think there's two very different kinds of support systems here. And I'm just so thrilled we get to share the stage with you at our school so y'all can feel as valued as you are in Jester's lore. Um, at the end of the day, the only thing we want to do at Del Sol is help you guys feel like the champions you are anyway. And if we get to win anyway then cool then we've definitely worked towards it so uh cool stuff Kopi, my bad you told me to shut up a lot more often than this well i i mean i've part of what championship day championship day is is, is telling stories and how neat these stories are and yeah. essentially that's what this league is is creating these stories and you know maybe just to back you guys up a little bit um to, to just round out how beautiful this day is you know uh, Del Sol, I think the one that stands out the most is Ali, is the yeah. moment I was there for Ali. We, we a million a, percent. A, a really just beautiful, awe-stricken, like, cryful moment with Ali. On, on the surface, even if I retell the full story in detail, it sounds very simple, mm -hmm. but it, it, was, it was just a very strong scene, a very strong moment um, of reality to where just, I think, it sucked the air out of the room. Uh, and I always love finding those moments and finding those particular things. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what it was. We had to just had to sit and talk about it for a minute because it's yeah. like, <gasps> do I get the essay on that? <laughs> sure, sure. So, Karina, like, I wanted our playoff to be as strong as possible. So, the biggest hole in our game that I was struggling to help break through with the kids was storytelling. You know, I feel like I'm an okay storyteller, but I was having a hard time teaching the kids how to do it well enough that I was going to feel confident for them in playoffs. So I said, Kopi, come on down. Let's, let's, let's teach some storytelling. So Kate, Kopi did one final practice with us before playoffs, which I haven't had Kopi for a practice in a couple of years. So I'm really glad I, I decided I needed some help. And uh, Kopi did a couple consciously serious scenes with the dull soul students consciously serious trying super hard to make them not care about the quirks and the funny that the, we think we want all the time and just focus on telling something that made sense and was and it was okay for it to be dark or serious and this simple scene he initiated with one of my sophomores ollie who i would have loved to work into a playoff show um but the seniors are like nope this is our chance thanks bye um, which, you know, I kind of built the program for them to be able to do that. But anyway, this sophomore, Ollie, uh, one of the theater minds at the school who's coming up, just got done playing Cogsworth in their big production of Beauty and the Beast. Definitely somebody that the team knows is going to be a future leader in my camp. Um, stood up there with Kopi and they did a scene about going to the swim meet. And Ollie was at first the super excited swim meet student who's like, why aren't we in the car already? And Kopi played mom. And mom was a little upset about how all they did was put effort and time and care into the family. And here was this bratty little kid who was always urging for more. And this time it's the swim meet. And Ollie digested that and, and, and began to understand that we were telling a story more, more tied to real life than, you know, we had all year. And Without Kopi contributing anything to on purpose push Ollie, Ollie realized maybe the right thing to do here is to not be the bratty child. Maybe what I need to do is grow up a little bit and recognize that mom has been doing so much for me, it's true. And maybe I can meet them halfway and miss one swim meet so that I can do the dishes for mom. Kopi followed that with a boom and everybody erupted in the room. And, I, you know, it, it taught a whole room of Del Sol students that there's so much more to what we create on stage than just the giggles. We, if we can create the feels, then all of the other stuff is candy. So it was a really special moment for us. And I think it taught just enough storytelling acumen to even my seniors at that stage that they would go out and have a couple more meaningful scenes en route to this championship. 
So we, we hope to see some heartstrings pulled on at championship day if we have anything to say about it. But thanks for that, Kopi. Now, what's what's the weird thing from Riff's side? I want to hear your, I, your little story. I've got, a, I've got a couple of really strong honorable mentions, but a clear winner. Um, I had a moment in this past week looking at Sophia being the new person in the middle of that storm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then thinking about Haley and just the other new people there and how hard it must be for a new person to be in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, to where Haley's a powerful tornado as well, like mm-hmm. Jesus. Uh, and then Sophia just having to digest everything she's put in the middle of. Even talked to, I was even talking a song about it. I was like, look at Sophia. Like what bus, like what did she get off at the wrong bus stop? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Um, honorable mention there, Josh, Josh, Josh's emotion after making it to the championship this past weekend just mm-hmm. got me every time I, I've mentioned that so many times since then. And, oh, uh, that got me, but it's hard not to say that the whole creation of the name Riftside mm-hmm. is, yeah, it's yeah. not the story there. So those of you that don't know, Riftside is a fictional school. But Riftside is not a real place. Uh, it was a set of circumstances to where they had to create a name. And, and my only requirement in this scenario is that the name has to sound like it's a real place. Mm. So uh, they essentially created acronyms for two graduated players. For those of you that don't know who they were, uh, Maya Swift and Emmy Robinson, who were old uh, students from their school, who kind of came into the league and just took it over. Um, and it's weird that that happens, uh, and especially two students, same school. And that's kind of what they did. They went and stole every award, everything that you could possibly do. Those two did it, uh, including our rainy, our, our last two reigning MVPs were those two girls. So they basically took their names and turned and created Rift, the R for Robinson from Emmy Robinson's last name and the Ift from Swift from Maya mm-hmm. Swift's last name. And then they just threw side on it because Maybe one of them watched uh, Saved by the Bell or something. Um, <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> even I'm too young for that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So it's hard not to say that, that story. It, this, and that's how the year started was with Riffside. So that's a great place to start when you got a story like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was what Emmy and Lai, Maya left behind. And that's kind of what all these students leave behind. Maybe just one more question to to uh, to move this forward because i mean we've we've been talking for a half hour here and i i think it happens so fast i know um as far as paying homage to your students who have graduated who are not here with us on this ride uh oh. because to me to me everyone matters the students that are here the coaches that are here the coaches who are not with us anymore the, the students who have graduated and moved on uh, everyone has been a part of these journeys. Um, I mean, any any special thoughts about some of your your graduated teams that have left behind something for you? Uh, basically, just kind of like the Rift Side story I was telling. Uh, anything that that makes this year kind of more special because of just the weird building blocks that have been built. Uh, uh, fair whoever warning. Like to go first. Yeah, Karina, there's a floodgate on my end. So if you've got uh, anything you want to say, now might be the time I will drown you. I will drown so much. Okay, let me start. So, um, yes, of course, the whole riff side. Um, Maya and Emmy were just rock stars that taught me so much. They made my coaching position like so easy, really. <laughs> like it was, it was really fun. Like they, I, I, I called them. I even considered them my. Um, my co-coaches like I was mm-hmm. like you you guys are my co-coaches um this year even though you're seniors I need your help right and they just killed it and they tried their hardest with the, what they could and what they had and they made it as far as winning MVP and winning the championship last year which was really cool even though it was like all online like they were they were real leaders and I think for my two seniors that were that are on the team now that were that are veterans from last year that were also in the championship show Joshua mm-hmm. and Alicia they have learned so much from Maya and Emmy and they um, have just learned characters they're always willing to try something new because they knew that that's how they were they're always willing to challenge themselves and they're always just, they come up with the most random ideas in the whole wide world. And 
it's definitely left a mark. Them too, for sure, have left an amazing mark, even for the ones that are new this year and are just jumping in. They see Maya and Emmy and Joshua and Alicia. Like they see how they're willing to just take anything that's thrown at them. And I will throw stuff at them and just be like, let's do this. And they'll be like, oh my God, that was, <laughs> that was not, that was fun, but <laughs> let's not do it again. You know, right. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I have a pretty small team. It's just, mm. it's, it's pretty intimate. It's not as big as yours by, by any means. You have a huge team. That's so amazing. Thank you. And for me, it's, it's definitely more intimate. I have a good eight kiddos that, mm. that actually go and, and, and dedicate their time. So it's a little bit easier for me to get students in to different games and shows and stuff mm. like that. It's even harder for me. I'm just like, who's going to play this week? <laughs> um, so it's, it's just, it's been, they've, they've definitely left a mark and even going back to um, my first years of coaching, I had just amazing players such as Song, Mariah. Um, oh my gosh, they were so amazing. So, and they are still, I mean, Mariah coached for a little bit. Song is still mm -hmm. in the gestures world. Like, you know, they have still gone through and done improv before and, and, song is a coach herself who we faced last year and she did amazing and you know it's just so fun to to see um your fellow teammates um kind of grow into a like the program and mm -hmm. um overall it's just been they've all left their mark and 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 I will say we always refer kind of back to the shows that we've played previously. Like, oh my gosh, remember that one time that we did this, this and that. And, and, and it just brings back good memories and it's just a good high school career for them. You know, they will always remember this. So yeah. it, the rhetorical <laughs> connection to kind of close off what you're saying. So yeah, we have some, some giants in that history, your riff side history. Um, mm -hmm. but you know what those giants didn't do, uh, was make it to back to back championships, Ooh, but who did right. Josh and Alicia. Mm -hmm. So maybe Josh and Alicia have created their own legacy here. That's a tip of the cap to you too. If you're watching and listening. Oh my goodness. Yes. Uh, and Warren, what do you think? Yeah. You want to talk about giants of the past paving the way for the future. I mean, I don't have to go back far to see some of the influences of Del Sol students past or Warren students past in general. Um, anybody who knows me and my creativity might realize that I'm the type of person who, when I'm inspired by something, I grab a piece of it and I put it in my toolkit and I think maybe I'll pull that out someday. Um, so I do like a, a lot of impersonations when I'm feeling funny, or I do a lot of voices that I've heard before that I think are funny. Point is, is like my students have all got parts of me coming out of me and that they've taken and used, but even more so part of my teams over the years have been strengthened by those who've come before. So um, yikes. Last year, Christian Cazares, uh, Jack Elton Award recipient, one of the proudest uh, moments of my life was watching him get recognized for the sheer love he gives to his team. Um, you know, he didn't make it this far. So Speedy and Ghost did, right? That's crazy. <laughs> if you think about it, because Christian was such a lifeblood student of everything that I philosophize. He knew exactly what I was talking about at all times. Mia Allen, his cohort from last year, former MVP candidate. I mean, talk about electric creativity on the level that I don't know if we can match, but able to... Um, to learn how to use that creatively or correctly is probably what sets our current team apart from even Amia, who didn't make a wrong move last year, but was so bold with what they attempted to do that sometimes it drowned out everybody else. And I don't think our current crop has that. You look at uh, Robin Simpson from last year, another MVP candidate, cool as a cucumber, absolutely stable. Bella's taken a lot of those skills from Robin for sure but Ro but Bella does it in a way that still has the wisp of funny that I think sets her apart from Robin because Robin was such a steak and potato type of improviser somebody who absolutely gave you 
what was needed. Not necessarily what was funny, but what was needed. So when we got funny from Robin, it was like, heck yeah. But that's just last year's squad. I mean, I've had, to name a few, Av- Avalon Wandra was my original lifeblood at Del Sol who gave me three great years of improv, was a three-time all-star, absolutely quality student, a, a valedictorian for her year, like just somebody I was so grateful to get to grow. She was my first president in Del Sol improv, which like, thank you for all of the ways you've helped us grow. Uh, the Stoyanova twins of 2020 were my first four-year students I had to say goodbye to so prematurely because we never got a playoff. Isabella and Magdalena Stoyanova, great kids. They're still hanging out with us, still rooting on Speedy and company because they're really close friends with him. Um, you know, those kids, I'll never stop regretting that those twins didn't get a shot at playoff improv in senior year. It's a bummer, but proud of them. Um, Greg Holt. I bet that's a name you may not have expected to hear, but Greg Holt was the first kid uh, way back in or my original year with Del Sol who taught me that I can teach a kid to rear back instead of heighten, right? Like Greg's only problem was he had too much of everything at all times. And I had to be like, hey, let's learn how to use it when you need it, not when you are out there at all times. Um, and then... If I'm being honest, influences have been carrying over from my past schools. You know, I've, for those who don't know, I've been around the horn, man. I coached at Valley to get me started. I coached at Cowan. I coached at Sierra Vista. I was constantly inspired by the Adam Neary teams, you know, the, the Palo Verdes of the old and and the LVA when he was there for a while. Adam Neary was somebody I looked up to because he did get paid for the programs that he built at schools to do improv. And I was like, I want to be him. That's who I want to be. So Coach Adam Neary, I'm still trying to follow in your footsteps. Never done learning. So I've learned a ton from his schools. But the last example I'll give you is my Clark kids. Um, Way back when I first started at Clark, these guys had so much talent. You want to talk about kids who've had an influence on Jester since. I mean, Elizabeth Zerbic was there. Uh, Roxanne Carlos was there when I was there. Um, those are those minds from that team who've gone on to be coaches or other personalities for us. But the reality is, is I've been trying to figure out how to take the kids creativity and turn it into leadership and, and get this whole thing going since all the way back then. Kopi, here's a fun story. You'll remember, remember my first playoff with Clark, I had all this mountainous talent. And what did I do to determine my playoff lineup? I had all, all of us vote on it. I had all of the kids, whether they were committed to us every week or not, vote on who they wanted to see in the playoffs. And boy, did we crash and burn in round one. But it was still a learning opportunity for me to go, okay, well, maybe getting the full strength to them was the wrong idea. But my goal is to always have the kids have a voice in what we do. So, um, you know, you probably expected, like I said, uh, a lot to say, but the floodgates came out. So many different ways my teams in the past have influenced me and so much gratitude goes out to every single one of you I just named, every culture I've ever been a part of, every school I've ever worked with, every creative brain who's come through and trusted me to let them be them. Um, Thank you guys. Like I am so freaking humbled to be here, ready to play championship improv with an amazing Rift side champion caliber team. Like we're going to have a blast in honor of all of you. So all my former Warren students, this goes out to you guys for sure. Come and see the show, 23rd, let's go. Essentially, I wanted to ask this question to close this uh, interview because uh, I basically wanted everyone to realize that everyone's important. Everyone has a piece in this. Um, Yes, they do. Thank you. Whether you are the new person on your team behind a mountain of other students who are older or um you got some opportunities this year and you felt maybe you could have done a little bit better or different uh or if you've graduated and and moved on with your lives a little bit you all had some kind of piece of this um heck i i spoke to mia yesterday uh avalon pretty recently maya a week ago um emmy is coming to championship day with us yay hi emmy so it, yeah, it, everyone's got an important place in this, and you'll see how and why on Championship Day. So come see Karina and Warren duke it out with their literal fists, because that's a that's a new section we're going to add this year. Um, <laughs> and, 
uh, we will see you on Championship Day. Was that punch good enough, Kobe? It was great. Okay. It was really good. <laughs>